Hey, it's Kate with the Thrive with Kate podcast, and I'm thrilled to be here with Crowd Health CEO Andy Scoovener. Schoonover. Schoonover. You got it. You got it. <laughs> and I ran into I ran into Crowd Health. I ran into Crowd Health when I had cancer. And a friend of mine and I was writing, which is Cancer Journal, and a, and a local friend of mine who had sort of researched all the things when it came to health insurance had run into Crowd Health, and she had sent me to to check it out. She's like, I really think you need to check it out. Crowd Health is not an insurance company, but a platform and community that empowers you with a crowdfunding tool and a wealth of resources to efficiently manage your healthcare costs. And when I read that, I was like, okay. Really? Like someone's finally giving us an option that is exactly what people who maybe want a better solution to their healthcare can do in in the United States. Like, are you are you serious? Like how does this how does this work? And so I I did my own research, um, signed up my family. And then recently I also have a coaching company. And one of my mastermind members, um, we, she was like, you know, I've doubled my income this year thanks to this mastermind group, but it's just all going into healthcare. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, check out Crowd Health. Go to joincrowdhealth.com. And she's a smart gal. She's running an organization. I'm like, see if it works. See if it works for your family at four and let me know. And so 48 hours later, she's like, I've just been, you know, triple clicking down on this, looking, you know, at all the options. And we transferred, we signed up. And now that doubling of my income will actually make a difference for my quality of life for me and my kids. Amazing. So that's who we are at Club Thrive. Uh, and that's what my people are looking for. And so just can you give us a background of like, how did this all begin for you? And let's start there. Yeah, absolutely. This is um, my second healthcare company. After my first one, I swore to myself and to my wife that I would never do a healthcare company again, because healthcare is just incredibly difficult to navigate. Um, Regulatorily difficult, everything about it is hard. Um, But I sold that first one. And, you know, most of us get um, health insurance from our employer. um, But there's a lot of us who are, you know, gig workers or freelancers or off doing something entrepreneurial on our own that we don't get healthcare from our employer. And so I went to what I thought was the only option at the time, which was healthcare.gov, which is the government sponsored marketplace where you can get health plans. And um, all I can say is it worked until I had to use it. Um, yeah. <laughs> my, li- my little one who was uh, one at the time was having recurring ear infections. So we went to an ear, nose and throat doctor who said, oh, she's got a perforated eardrum. And so she's going to have to get tubes in her ears. And we're like, okay. you know. So we went to the only place in town that was in network. Um, we can talk about networks later, but it was the only place in town in network where I could go get it. Got it. 15 minute procedure. Um, got the bill a few weeks later and it was $8,000. And I was just like, what? $8,000 for a 15 minute procedure? Like, that's crazy to me. And I was like, okay, well, you know, this is what health insurance is for. Like, this is the whole point of health insurance. Um, little did I know that I was going to get a note a few weeks after that from the health insurance plan that said uh, it was medically unnecessary. And so they refused to pay for it. So I had my ear, nose and throat doctor tell me that my daughter has a hole in her ear. Um, he uh, took off a day from his vacation to do this procedure because he was so worried about her long term hearing loss. And the health insurance plan said, no, it was not medically necessary. Um, and so, you know, it was at that point where, as you can probably imagine, I was pretty pissed, um, especially when they do this to your little girl, right? Like that's, there's just an, a, another kind of emotional thing here. And I was like, all right, fine. I quit, you know, I quit health insurance. Um, if you're not going to pay my bills, I'm not going to pay your bills. And so from then on, I have been uninsured. Um, I've been uninsured now for over four years. That sounds scary to a lot of people. I think it's the new way. And I hope by the end of this podcast, others will will agree with me that being uninsured is actually incredibly freeing um, and viable. Um, So my wife and I started putting together some tools that allowed us to operate outside of health insurance and got to a point and was like, I bet you other people would like to do this too. I bet you other people are, are facing the same situation as us. And so um, started a company as a result of that called Crowd Health. Um, we did started back in in 2021. We've had over 8,000, almost 9,000 people sign up so far. 
Um, we've processed 10,000 bills, everything from 69, 59, $69 pediatrician visits to, you know, $350,000, you know, hospital stays, NICU babies, cancer patients, all kinds of stuff we've, we've helped out people with. And so, um, that's the origin story, but in essence, what we were trying to do is like, there's gotta be a different way. There's gotta be a different way of paying for healthcare bills other than relying upon this huge entity to dictate what I can and cannot do with, with my healthcare. So, um, yeah, happy to dig into the details of that, but that's the, that's the origin story. Yeah. I just, you know, I mean, there's a few comments on that. It's like, I think the other thing that we wonder, uh, like when we're insured and we're paying these premiums is like, what are we, like, what are we funding? Like, what are we doing? And the, especially on the holistic side, my, my, my first company, yogahealer.com, it's like these people that are really healthy and making health conscious decisions all the time and are burdened with, you know, these monthly, just these monthly fees where they're, it's completely antithetical to their views and what they're, and what they're actually paying for. And then yeah. not, and then not really able to use on the back end Cause it's like, it's not that kind of healthcare that they actually want they don't actually they don't want to use yeah 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 i mean i think we we are our current medical system driven by health insurance companies is much more focused on alleviating symptoms than it is getting to root cause um and most of our members are looking for root cause solutions which oftentimes the health insurance plan isn't interested willing to to pay for um, and we can kind of talk about the perverse incentives of the system, but actually health insurance companies make more money when you are sick. Um, and that doesn't make a sense to a lot of people, but they actually want your, your cost to rise over the long term. And so you're sending your money to somebody who wants, who, who makes more money if you are sick, you have no idea where it's going. Um, and it's oftentimes going to procedures, services that, you don't particularly want to fund. Um, so you're and you're and you're subsidizing a lot of people who are not as cognizant, aren't don't take personal right. responsibility for their own health. And so, you know, these are all the things that we were thinking about as we started Crowd Health to say, you know, can we can we get a group of people together? Can we build a community of people who take care of themselves, who, you know, consider their bodies temples, who really do like our our take personal responsibility over, over their, their, their healthcare. And I think we've done a pretty good job of doing that over the last, you know, three plus years. Um, so, you know, our, our, our members are, you know, five points below the national average for BMI. Um, you yeah. know, they're non-smokers, they're, you know, they're mid thirties. Um, you know, our number one and number two expenses that we help fund are uh, pregnancies. So we got a lot of people getting pregnant, Yay. which um, I, I love funding babies. Um, yeah. And then two is active injuries. So it's people out doing things, being yeah. active, and it just happens. Like if you're on a mountain bike and you fall and you get hurt, like I'm all about helping that person because that's that stuff happens. Um the illnesses and things like that have been really, really low because we have a group of people who take care of themselves. So it's a, it's a great community to be part of. I'd love to get into like how it all works on the back end, And then, but I'd mm -hmm. also like to find out more and I don't care in which order we do this, but I'd also like to find out more about like, how does that work? What you were saying? And like, where is the, uh, like, what, what should people read or listen to to follow up more on how, how insurance companies make more money by people being sick? Cause I think a lot of people will be like, a bit skeptical about that and, and wonder more. Yeah. I mean, people always ask, I think probably the number one question I get is why is healthcare so expensive? And so right. I think I can do this pretty simply because it's not that hard to understand. You have the seller of healthcare, the seller of any good wants to get the highest price possible for their good or service. That's, you know, we, we get that, you know, we're entrepreneurs out here, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of your listeners are entrepreneurs. You'd like to get maximize your, the amount you can get for the amount of, of effort that you put in. That's real. That's, that's understandable. So those are the hospital systems. Those are the primarily sellers of healthcare, these hot, big hospital systems. Now the, the primary buyers of healthcare are insurance companies. Um, they're the ones that are, are paying for this. And so very few people understand that actually insurance companies want the price to go up also. 
Um, and just quick math here, it's simple math, but let's just imagine my family is paying $1,000 for premiums. Let's just say I'm in insurance, I'm paying $1,000 a month. The health insurance plan can only make $150 out of that $1,000 as profit. Okay. Um, that's, that's a law. It was, it was it'd been around for more than a decade. And so how do the health insurance plans make more money? How do they grow their profit by 10%? Well, their premiums, your monthly premium has to go up by 10%. So if your monthly premium goes from $1,000 to $1,100, your profit goes from $150 to $165. So you're the buyer of healthcare health insurance companies and the seller of healthcare hospital systems both want the price to go up. <laughs> so imagine that negotiation, you know, um, and, you know, both, both parties want the price to go up. And so, um, and we're the ones then paying, paying the bills. So that's ultimately what's, what's going on. And, and if people want to look more into this um, on the insurance call, it's called a medical loss ratio. So just Google medical loss ratio. Mm-hmm. And that is the law that forces insurance companies to limit the amount of profit that they can take from my monthly premium. You know, from the outside looking in, this looks brilliant. They say, oh yeah, of course we want to limit the insurance plan's profit. Like that makes total sense. We we want to do that. However, the second order effect of that is, is the only way they can make more money is to increase the premium. Um, We see this also on the military industrial complex. This is a cost plus system in the in the United States military, where if it costs you a thousand dollars, the government will give you eleven you know eleven hundred dollars, an additional hundred dollars for profit. So guess what? I want the price to be as high as possible because you know I I make as much or the cost, excuse me, of making that good as high as possible, so I can make as much money as possible. It's a totally perverted way of of looking at providing a, a cost or or a good or a service. Yeah. Uh, I interviewed David Belk, MD, who wrote The Great American Healthcare Scam, How Kickbacks, Collusion, and Propaganda Have Exploded Healthcare Costs in the U.S. And one of the things that he shed light on uh, for me was how the lack of transparency in the billing cycle is is intentional. Um, and when I had cancer, like I'd go to, you know, they'd say, you need to get this next. So I'd go to the, the desk of whatever that was next and say, well, what is this procedure going to cost? And and they would become angry with me for asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so to me, there's this, whenever we're dealing with a lack of transparency, we know that there's something else going on because in a good business, when you ask the price of something, someone will tell you what the price is and why it's worth that price. And if they're competitive in the marketplace, so the, clearly it's not running in a, in a clean market economy uh, mm-hmm. system. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I, I've always said that, you know, if, if you're not paying for the product or the service, you are the product, you know, and in, se- in essence, that's what's going on with healthcare. Like we aren't paying for it directly. And so we are the product, you know, and that's a, that's a really harmful way of, of looking at this, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not a healthy thing that we, we, we are not the customer of healthcare. We are the product of healthcare. And so that's the challenge that we have within our system is, is that we have really no incentive to ask for what the prices are because the health insurance plan is, is going to pay for it. And therefore uh, we don't really care how much we consume either um, because the health insurance plan is going to pay for it. So anytime that you're not actually paying for something that you're, you're consuming, we will overconsume. It is just human nature. And so that eliminates any kind of market forces that happen in any other place within you know, uh, healthcare, you know, healthcare has, you know, basically tripled, uh, the cost of, of healthcare has basically tripled over the last 15 to 20 years. Um, and anything that we pay directly for, you know, out of our pockets with that's health related has actually gone down. So, you know, uh, uh, the, oh, what, what is, what is the, uh, the eye surgery that people get, uh, oh, like the cataracts, the laser Lasix, L- Lasix, 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 um, the price of Lasix has actually gone down 75% over the last 15 to 20 years. So how can a medical procedure like Lasix, which is, you know, incredibly sophisticated with lasers and doctors and all kinds of people doing this go down 75%, but the cost of healthcare goes up 
you know, by three X over the last 20 years. Mm. It is because we have a system in which we're not actually paying for the goods that we are consuming. Um, and that's what needs to change. Yeah. And you know, and it's like, you think of like buying a car, it's like, you have to give them the money before you get to take the car off the lot. Yeah. And the absolute opposite happens. And then on the back end, you know, people are furious and like you and your, you and the daughter with the ear, me and my cancer yeah. bills. And it's like, well, I, I tried to get the information right mm -hmm. ahead of time and mm -hmm. I, and I couldn't. Okay. So now let, yeah. I want to talk about, we'll talk about crowd health and how it works. And then I really want to get into like the behind the scenes story of setting this up. Cause I cannot imagine, sure. I mean, obviously as you're a, <laughs> really smart guy. You went to Stanford business school. You've started other companies, right? And I'm sure this was, uh, I'm sure there was some things in the journey uh, along the way. And I'd love just as business owner to business owner, hear about that for you. Yeah. So have, first, have like, to. how does this thing work and how to, how do people sign up and what should they expect and all that? Yeah. And so um, I'll tell you, my inspiration comes from a different, a couple of different places. Um, one is um, there's actually a, uh, community or a number of communities in Kenya that do something like this, where that what they have found is that if you put your money together as a community, then, and if somebody gets hurt in that community, then you can use that money to help another person. But it is somebody directly in your community that you know, mm -hmm. you act differently. They take better care of themselves. They go to lower costs, you know, but yet still high quality providers. And so there's a significant um, change in behavior if you are in community, a community of people that share, um, you know, something in similar, similar, you know, it's one thing to uh, buy something that United Healthcare is going to pay for. I don't really care about United Healthcare. There's no emotional tie there. There is a difference when your neighbor is the person that is helping you out. And so we took lots of, um, you know, inspiration from that. We've also taken inspiration from the Amish, uh, funny enough, here in the United States, in Pennsylvania and Ohio, um, who do the exact same thing. They, they, If somebody in their community gets hurt, they all raise their hand and say, I'll help, I'll help, I'll help, I'll help. And so that was kind of the, the, the inspiration for what we've done. But you know, a little more broadly, what I have found over the last couple of decades is that the government and health insurance companies have wedged themselves in between us and our neighbor. Um, you know, two decades ago when your a neighbor moved in, we would go and give them cookies, right? Like that's just yeah. the thing that you do, yeah. right? Um, yeah. doesn't happen very often anymore in, right. in this country. And in some, in some part places of the country it does, but I think most people look at when their neighbor moves in, they're like, how much did they buy the house from? Because that's an indicator of how much my house is worth as yeah. opposed to, you know, who is my neighbor? So who are you? all of these, yeah. all of these things led us to a very community focused approach to doing this. So the way that this works is that if Kate broke her arm and it was $5,000, then Kate would be responsible for that first 500. And then we would submit the remaining 4,500 to the community at crowd. So crowd health would go to 45 people in that community and say, Hey, um, we have this woman in, where do you live, Kate? I live in Alta, Wyoming, Wyoming. We have this woman in Wyoming who broke her arm and she needs help. Are you willing to help her? And, you know, you can say yes or no. And if you say yes, then $100 goes from your account to Kate's account. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, when we have 45 people who say yes, you'll have $4,500 in your account plus your 500. You can then go to the doctor and spend that $5,000 and get a really, really good price because you're paying cash as opposed to the doctor having to fight with a health insurance company. Right. So that's the beauty of that. Then the question is like, okay, so why if... Andy, you know, was asked to help Kate. Yes, she's in my crowd health community and we're building that community. And that's great. But why would I help Kate? I don't know who Kate is. Um, and, you know, one of the things I find out about Kate when she submits her, her uh, bill to, to me is, you know, the last 10 times you've been asked, Kate, have you said yes, 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 yes. Or have you said no, 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 no. So I know if Kate is a really good member of the community because right. she's, helping others. I'm like, Oh, great. Kate is helping others. So I'm willing to help Kate. So there's a reciprocity that kind of builds up within the community. And that has led to 99% of, uh, excuse me, 98.6% of the time people have been asked to fund, they said yes. So um, the vast majority of the people say yes. So it's been a, an incredible, and this is over, you know, 10,000 plus bills um, over the last three plus years. Um, so that's the way that it works. It's pretty, pretty easy. Um, 
if you have a big emergency room, you know, visit, you go to the ER, um, you get all the bills afterwards, you submit them to us. We will then negotiate those down for you. And let's just say it was a $30,000 bill. We'll probably be able to get it down to 8,000 ish. And then we'll go to the community and say, Andy needs help with an $8,000 bill. We'll ask 80 people for a hundred dollars. When that comes in, it comes to me. I now have $8,000 to pay for that, that hospital bill. Um, and again, it is so important to note this because this is the biggest difference probably in our, our system is we are allowing people to pay in cash for these services. Um, and as a result of that, we're getting for our members prices that are about half of what health plans pay. So the doctors are so excited to work with people who will pay directly mm-hmm. that they give way, way better rates than if they have to fight with, with health insurance plans. So that's a little bit of mechanics, how it works. I'll only ask you once a month to help somebody. I'm not asking you every single day. I'm only asking you once a month. You know, so it takes you an extra 10 seconds every month to say, you know, yes or no. Um, and so that's how it's worked. And it's been, you know, 99% of the time it's worked great. Um, and the 1% of the time that it hasn't worked are for people who said no, 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 no to others. Those are the only bills that have not gotten funded thus far are the takers and not the givers. So it's worked out great. So how does it work with, uh, the contribution, how do the monthly contributions work? And I can just read mm-hmm. from your site. Anyone can go to joincrowdhealth.com and go to how it works. And you can see from yeah. your individuals, zero to 54, the maximum contribution is 135 per month. 55 to 64 is 270 per month. And for families of four, the maximum contribution is $405 per month. Yeah. And those are the maximums. So funny enough, um, you know, we actually, they go down, up and down every month based upon how many bills are coming in. So, um, you know, the maximum for a family is 405. This month, we only asked 180 of the 405 because the bills are so low. So a family of four on Crowd Health would contribute $180 to somebody else in the community to, to help them out. Um, on a, in addition to that, they're paying crowd health $50 per person per month. That helps us pay the bills. Um, but that contribution goes up and down every month, just depending upon, um, how much, you know, wh- how many, how many bills that we get in. So we always tell people, like, if you're a family of four budget for four or five, and if it comes in lower than that, then great. You got money to invest. You have money to take out your family to dinner. You have money to fill up the gas, whatever you need, but. Yeah, this month of the 405, we're only asking for for 180 of that. And then how does that work with the monthly subscription? Is that for a family of four? So family of four, um, the anniversary date of when you join. So let's just say you joined on July 1st. The first of every month, we will charge you uh, $50 per person in that family. So family of four will charge you 200 bucks. And that at some point throughout the month, around the same time every month, it's plus or minus a few days, we'll ask you for that additional, you know, in this this case, 180. So families of four in July will be paying 380 um, for, you know, the entire month. And then there's no deductibles or things like that. The only thing we, is we ask you to pay the first $500 of any health event. Um, that you have just to have, give you some skin in the game before, you know, we'll send the rest of the crowd. So if you, you know, have cancer, it's 500 bucks. If you go to the ER, it's 500 bucks. Um, and so it's the whole health event. So if you have cancer and Kate, I, you know, you just said you had cancer, so you've lived this, it's multiple doctor visits, it's scans, it's labs, it's meds, it's hospital, all these things. That's one health event. So you pay $500 of that. And then anything on top of that for your entire cancer journey is um, can be funded by the crowd. So that's how that works. Amazing. And in talking to people, like, what are the, like, what are the, the biggest things people have to like wrap their mind around in leaving insurance? Yeah. Um, so there's, I would say there's two things. One, one is a great thing. And one is a little bit more effort. So let me get, I do the great thing first. You know, I, when I was paying my healthcare.gov bill, I had to pay $1,200 a month for me, my wife, my, my two girls. And I hated paying that every month, hated it, you know? Um, and now I get them, I get an email every month, 
that I get to help somebody out directly. My money goes directly from Andy to Kate or Kim or John or whoever. Um, and the crowd health doesn't touch that money. It goes from my account to their account, which is super cool that I know exactly where my money is going this month. And so I actually feel good about myself that I get to help somebody with a pregnancy or a broken arm. We had a member, uh, I don't know, nine months ago, something like that, who had a miscarriage. And we sent that out to a bunch of people. You know, there's expenses associated with that. And um, we had all kinds of people come back and be like, you know what? That was a part of my story. Like, I know what this family is going through. I know the pain that they're experiencing. Is there anything I can do to help them? You know, instead of a hundred dollars, can I give $200 to that family? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just like, you're like, whoa, like that, that is different. Yeah. Right? That is, yeah. that is different. Um, yeah. Abby in Tennessee had her, her, our um, fingers chopped off in a boating accident last summer. And same thing, huge expenses. And people are like, I can't believe this. Like, what can we do to help this 19 year old girl in Tennessee? Could imagine losing all of her fingers. And she was an artist, you know, and so this was a oh. pretty big thing. And so, you know, like you actually know where your money is going. And it's just like, that's super powerful that I can feel good about helping somebody out with their pregnancy or their miscarriage or their broken arm or whatever this month, as opposed to paying United Healthcare. That's, that's the good part about crowd health that people like, wait, what I'm helping somebody else directly. That's crazy. Yeah. The, the bad part. And I would say it's actually a good part. It just takes a little bit more time is we don't have any networks, you know, but we do ask you to either shop or allow us to shop for healthcare services. Okay. Um, and so I'll give you an example. We had a woman in Austin who was playing pickleball and she tore her ACL. Um, so she went to the orthopedic surgeon and said, um, uh, you know, what, what is it going to cost? And the orthopedic surgeon said $22,000 to repair your ACL. So she calls us and she says, Hey, it's going to be $22,000. I'm going to go do it next Friday. And we're like, hold on a second. Can we, can we shop this for you? Mm -hmm. So we actually called the orthopedic surgeon and we said, Hey, if we, you know, if this member can pay at the point of care, you know, will you give them a discount? Those types of things. And he's like, yeah, absolutely. It will be $12,000 if you pay at the point of care. So one phone call got that bill down from, I think it was 22 to 24,000. I can't remember exactly what the first bill was, but it got down to like 11 or $12,000, like in one phone call. And so all we do is the only like extra step that we ask our members to do is like, please call us if you have a big bill, like, because we can negotiate for you to get these bills down substantially. Yeah. And um, we just ask that you allow us to do that because, you know, we can't have people go and just pay $24,000 for an ACL when you could have gotten it for 12 with one phone call. So yeah. That's the only thing is if there's any big bills, just call us, you know, and we like, let us do a little bit of work for you. We're not asking you to shop. You can, if you want, but you are not asking you to shop. We'll do it for you. All we ask is you just to reach out and you have a personal care advocate within crowd health. So you're talking to the same person every time they get to know you, they get to know your family, you get to know them um, probably more than you want to. Uh, we have some amazing people internally who love to, to chat with our members, but you get to talk to the same person and, and me having to, you know, built a company as, you know, I, I know you and many others have two building companies out there is we get to do things that we hate about the incumbent. You know, we get to fix things that we hate about yeah. the incumbent. Yeah. And I hated when I was having healthcare issues is having to call the health plan and like starting off in India and, yeah. you know, like I, they didn't know what was going on. So that yeah. I, then I had to, they sent me to somebody else and I had to tell them like my intimate, like healthcare story. And I was like, yep. no, we're not doing this. Like, yep. um, so you've got one person. Oh, and then you're on hold. Like it is a part-time job. Like with oh, any major it procedure, is. it's a part-time job to deal with your medical bills. Even if you've got good. It's insurance. terrible. It's terrible. So what we, we tell our parent members, Hey, if you got a big one, call us, let us do that for you. Um, and then we will be the intermediary there to help you. So it doesn't have to be a full-time job for you. Um, so, uh, that's, it's, it's a good and a bad, it takes one extra step from our members, but it, it leads to, you know, great outcomes. I say this, you know, if you take one extra step in the beginning, it alleviates all the issues on the back end, right? Like the thing I hate, I live in Texas. The thing I hate is property tax, um, bills in the mail. 
and healthcare bills in the mail. Cause both of those, I have no idea how they came up with that answer. Right. Like, I'm just like, what? Like, this is like, this is Greek to me. Like, how did you get there? You know? And so, you know, if, if you allow us to help you up front, you don't have that stress and anxiety on the back end because of these big bills coming in that you have no idea where they're coming from and things like that. So it's a good and a bad. It's just one that we ask people to do a little bit more work up front. I'm curious. I mean, it's interesting when to define something by what it's not, right? So it's like crowd health is it's not insurance, right? It's a it's a community, it's a platform, it's a way of getting your healthcare needs met. Um, how do you just like how what is the noun? Like when someone's like, what it's a thing, like what is the thing called? Yeah, I mean, I I'll, I'll be totally honest with you, and this is maybe into like the 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 backstory or the whatever of yeah. founding a company. I mean, I, I don't know if I found like the perfect category description for this. Um, you know, we've called it peer-to-peer funding mm. that resonates with people. Um, we've called it uh, healthcare crowdfunding, um, which that resonates with people. Although people directly go to like GoFundMe and are like, oh wait, are, is it really going to get funded? And so, okay. you know, so those are the couple of the examples that we've, we've used. And so, you know, if I was an, an awesome entrepreneur, which I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of faking it until I make it. Um, I probably have a great description of the category, but you know, or maybe not. Like when, when you're, I mean, I find when you're an innovator, like you have to make up the, you have to put the words together and make up maybe a new one, which they synergize into because it's, it's not a pre-existing category, which is your whole yeah. point of income. Yeah. Health funding. I don't know. You know, when I, when I walk into mm-hmm. the elevator and people are like, what do you do? I was like, Oh, I'm creating an alternative to health insurance. And people are like, yes, please. Like how, yeah. how do I sign up? You know, it's just like health insurance is, is so horrible. I, I saw a, a, I think it was a few survey um, from a year or two ago. It was like the top 10 most hated industries. And um, the U S government was on, was number one. I didn't even know that was an industry. Um, two was health insurance, three was pharmaceuticals and four was your cable company. So I was like, okay, health insurance and, and pharmaceuticals are right there at the top with, with government and cables. I was like, yeah, it's probably pretty accurate. You know, if I can be like, Hey, we're trying to build something that resolves the issues that people have with health insurance. People are like, yeah, I want that. Did you have any idea when you were at Stanford business school that it might lead to something like this? No, I wanted to do real estate. Funny enough. Oh, interesting. You know, so I, I, I went in thinking that I was going to be, you know, run a real estate fund and uh, got the entrepreneurial itch while I was out there as, as you do when you're, you know, walking down the street and Steve Jobs walks by. I was at Stanford when Steve was still around, um, you know, the founder of Intel was, was one of my professors. And so you just get that entrepreneurial itch to go and do something that's, that's, you know, can change the world. Um and, you know, did that once and it worked out really, really well. Didn't think I was going to do it again. Was going to focus on being husband and dad for a while. And I did do that for a while, but it was like, this, this came up and I just felt like it's what I was called to do. So, you know, this is very much a missional thing for me. You know, I'm seeing things where 200,000 families every year go bankrupt due to healthcare expenses, even though they have health insurance. I'm just like, you know, I'm not to be cliche about it, but like, if we don't do something, what are, what is our kids, what are our kids going to be left with? It's going to be just awful, you know? And, yeah. and so I think something has to be done. So this is very much a missional thing for me. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think people who, who are members of crowd health see that they see that like, we love our people really, really well. Um, our, our logo is a heart, like, and we redid it because I, I asked my team, I was like, what do we do better than anybody else? Like mm-hmm. we as entrepreneurs always ask that. And one, my, actually my executive assistant is like, we just love our members better. Like we just truly mm-hmm. like love them well. And I'm like, yeah, well, let's make it a heart. Like that's what we're about. Like we love our members well. And so if people are skeptical of this, go to um, trustpilot.com. It's a, it's a website that collects reviews and um, go to crowd health and take, t- take a look. Um, there's 250 reviews of our members being like, you know, I lost my child during delivery. We lost a baby a couple months ago. And she was just like, the love that I felt from crowd health has been just incredible. Um, and it's just like, 
man, if we can touch individuals in just a small way, um, like it's, it's, it's a powerful thing. That's what I want to do with the next part of my life. So it's, it's pretty neat. I've run, I wrote a book, Body Thrive in 2015 and, and had a certification program for health coaches just around circadian rhythm habits, just very, you know, mm-hmm. anti-inflammatory circadian rhythm habits and the community evolved, right? If you create a, a, a community that's growing together, it, it takes over and starts to lead the way. And uh, the community went more into primal habits or the habits that we had before agriculture, mm. uh, just kind of naturally, I think because we were global, we preceded a lot of the the more intellectualized systems of holistic health and when it went to more of just, you know, what it, what is primal instinctual health look like? And so I've been, I've been leading this community, you know, in various forms, uh, you know, some would say roughly over the last 20 years. And so what I see in that, and in, in when you, when you have a group with goals and when you have a group with health goals and you have a, a system to support them in their goals is that absolutely tremendous things happen and that habits are free, like the habits that make us the healthiest are free. And so when we when we compile all that together, there's a real sense of uh, leaving, I would say, consumer culture. And we see that a lot with the primal habits. And I have a book called Primal Habits. That okay. you know what those are. Uh, the people exit consumerism and enter creator, right? They're, they return to the seat of the human as the creator of their own life and their destiny and their future and their family and, and that. And so to me, when I, the more I understand about how you've set up crowd health, there's one of the, one of the habits of primal is called commune and just looking at humans as an ultra social species and how humans that are thriving are in an ultra social environment and it's purpose driven. All right. So if we know that historically, and there's a ton of research, I mean, there's uninflamed is the mothership of book of primal habits and it is an extra 300 pages or whatever because of all the you know all the studies and the research and the blah 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 mm-hmm. blah that goes along with like how we know what we know but we know we're communal we know we're ultra ultra social right and we know that we're purpose and focus driven right so if we don't have a purpose we lose focus right and if we look at today what's going on is like okay when you lose health and we lose health through becoming inflamed and the more inflammatory our diet, right, the more we have weight creep often. And then the more we have weight creep, the lower our cognitive uh, plasticity is, our cognitive functional abilities are, our neuroplasticity, our ability to learn new things is. And all these things are correlated with, like, don't ask the questions until after you get the bill. Yeah. And then you're right. in one of your blog posts, 50% of Americans now carry medical debt, a new chronic condition for millions. It's like, not only do, do, the, do we have the chronic condition, we now have chronic medical debt on top of our chronic conditions, right? And the system, like you said earlier, is just engendered to keep the ball rolling, keep mm-hmm. the profit flowing in to, to the big medical industrial yeah. complex, food industrial complex, all, all the all the things. So one of the things that I noticed, because I also run Wellness Pro Academy, which is also global, where we coach wellness pros into a club-based business model. When I see crowd health, I'm like, it's a club where we fund each other's healthcare bills. Yeah. Pretty simple, right? I love that. And so we're transferring like all of these different types of wellness pros into a club-based model. Because when we're in a club, especially when we have to pay to be in a club, like most clubs are exclusive if you're not a member and inclusive if you are a member, right? And usually membership requires some sort of skin in the game, which in today's, you know, today's world is is economic, is financial. When we mm-hmm. have that kind of commitment, when we have that shared shared purpose, right? And focus and a highlight on how we want to commune in the future. Then these tremendous, these tremendous things happen, including autonomy and health. <laughs> yeah. Right. In, in an intergenerational way. Mm-hmm. And so what I'm noticing in terms of like this great divide, and I was just at a music festival all weekend. And to me, it's so, so scary to see how people feed their children. Right. And when I look at something like crowd health, it's like there's an incentive for the club at crowd health to be healthier. Mm-hmm. There's a direct incentive of like every what everyone pays each month is less money if we're healthier. And yes, we will have pregnancies. And yes, thank gosh, we will have uh, thank gosh the pregnancies. And yes, we'll have accidents and injuries because that's part of living an adventuresome life. Yeah. 
right? And we want to have those, like minimize those with greater mind-body awareness and, you know, increased of, you know, ability to navigate through space doing dangerous things. I'm an adrenaline addict myself. I love (laughs) downhill skiing. I love mountain biking. I'm a surfer, like all the things. And like stuff happens, you know, the rogue wave. So we want to minimize that. So we want as a community to get smarter. Like, and we want to activate our collaborative intelligence so that the club itself, like the, the members of the club get smarter. So I'd love to hear how through your blog and through the resources that you're providing your members, that you're you're helping the whole crowd, the whole club at Crowd Health, uh, just become smarter, healthier, happier human beings. Yeah, it's a really good question. It's something that we definitely have worked on and continue to work on and are still trying to to optimize. I mean, I think that one of the things, at least from my perspective, and I don't know your kind of worldview on this, Kate, but um, I think that we've gotten got duped by the medical industrial complex to think that, um, you know, doctors know it all. Um, you know, the doctors who went to medical school who, t- you know, typically have zero nutritional um, backgrounds, um, no, no teaching. And a part of me is like, thank God that, you know, Harvard business or Harvard medical school didn't teach their doctors. Cause I'm pretty sure they would teach them the wrong thing. Um, and so, you know, I, I I'm, I'm trying, we're trying to get Wait, people. Can you back that up? Like, do you mean because of the, ins- the financial incentives on the other side from the pharmaceutical? Yeah. Ins- the, fi- the, the, the financial. Yeah. And then, and look who are funding all of these things. Um, you know, I think I, I don't exactly know what the, the, this little council is called, but I think the FDA puts together a council every two years that basically tells the American public what they should and should not be eating. And I think all but one person on that council of like 20 people has some kind of conflict because they're being paid by a pharmaceutical company or a big food, you know? And so I think there's so many conflicts that go on within these medical schools, within these big medical journals, these, you know, the American college of, of cardiologists, the American diabetes association, all of these things that I, I don't think you can get accurate information from some of these organizations. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. And so what we're trying to do is saying like, look, you should get to know your body and understand your body and how your body responds to these things. And so we very much push a learning of what's going on with you. Um, and we do that in a couple of different ways, but our primary way is every month or most months we have a, a special um, and that special can be like something that you not wouldn't normally do, but because crowd health is helping you out with it, you're going to do this month. So for example, a DEXA scan, um, DEXA scans, you know, for people who under, who don't know what that is, they'll tell you it's a, it's a, I think it's a CT scan of your entire body. It will tell you fat, uh, mass index. Um, it will tell you bone density. It will tell you visceral fat. It will tell you muscle density. And all of these things, which are key components to longevity. Um, and we have really focused on visceral fat as for, for that specific scan and, and teaching people what visceral fat is and how impactful it is to your, your, your health. Um, you know, you can look at somebody who looks obese to you, but has zero visceral fat and, you know, their, their extra weight is probably not doing them. It's not doing them good, but it's maybe not doing them as bad as you think. You can also look at somebody who looks skinny, who has a ton of visceral fat and visceral fat for people who are listening is the fat that roams around your organs. This is not the fat that hangs out on your waist. It's the fat internal underneath the subcutaneous level that hangs out around your organs and can create just absolute metabolic chaos Mm -hmm. within your, your body. And so we're, we're teaching people about that. Um, We had a VO2 max, a VO2 max is basically you get on a treadmill, you run for 10 minutes, and it will tell you how, how efficient your lungs are at absorbing oxygen, using oxygen levels during rigorous activity. And that is, uh, from some people, um, the number one indicator of, of longevity is your VO2 max. And most people don't know what a VO2 max is, has never heard of it. And so we're trying to educate people on what are some of these other things that you can do to um, assess what's going on with your body that your primary care physician would, would, you know, Western trained primary care physician is probably not looking at. 
Um, we do the uh, cardiac calcium scores. So, you know, that's one that we did, I think a couple months ago. So that's the, how much um, calcium is built up in your, your arteries um, in, in, in your heart. And so these are things that we're trying to just teach people by understanding. And these are all low cost, by the way, all, every single one of those is under a hundred dollars. And so these are low cost services that people can do. You know, a, a, a cardiac calcium score is almost like a, uh, mammogram for your heart. Um, you know, it's, it's like, that's the equivalent. And so wouldn't you want to know, you know, what's going on with your heart, um, with, for a hundred dollars for sure you would. So we're doing those types of things that we think are, are super, um, impactful. And then also on just, you know, less about the physical side and more about the system side, we're teaching people, you know, where they need to go, what doctors they need to see, what types of doctors they need to see. People don't understand that if you go to a doctor that is associated or affiliated with the hospital system, they are going to be three to five times more expensive than a doctor who's not affiliated with a hospital system. I told this one analogy and I, I have it up on our Instagram account where I was in the, the airport and I had a bottle of water that I, I bought for $5 at the airport. I could have got it at the grocery store for a dollar, but I bought it for $5 at the airport. Why is that? The airport had me trapped. I couldn't go anywhere else. I had to get my bottle of water from the airport. The hospital system is the exact same way. Once you enter, it's very, very difficult to leave. And so when we say, hey, if you don't enter into the hospital system, then your costs are more like the grocery store as opposed to the airport. And so we're trying to teach people these tools that will allow them to, whether you're a crowd health member or not, navigate this really complex health system better. So we're doing, you know, all kinds of things on the educational side. I can't tell you we're, you know, A plus at it. We're still learning and, and kind of figuring out what's working and what's not working. But those are some of the things that we've done that have been pretty successful. Amazing. So where are you with um, like home test kits and advocating for people to do whether it's like a like the poop on the stick test or microbiome testing or I mean, to me, that industry is just it's exploding, right? And it's a lot of these tests are fairly affordable. Yeah. And we're trying to, I want to do a microbiome test, you know, and I've, I've reached out to a couple of the companies and we just haven't been able to get there on those yet. But mm -hmm. I think that one's really, really important um, mm -hmm. for people to understand their microbiome because um, it does have so many, you know, metabolic health consequences if your microbiome is, is screwed up. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, literally in the last two weeks, I've reached out to six different companies to see mm -hmm. if we could work something out with them. So that's something that's important to us as, as well. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. coming for sure. Yeah. I mean, it really seems like as, as people have more, you know, people are more interested in taking control of their data, including their health data and, and not having the intermediary and not needing to go somewhere to do the test. And if you can just prick yourself and get your blood or put a scoop of poop on a stick and put it in a bag or saliva. Yeah whatnot. It's like, wow, this is all technology is really helpful. <laughs> for yeah, the absolutely. Information, right? right? Yeah. And I, I think the other thing too, that we're trying to do is we're trying to keep the cost of crowd health as low as possible. Yeah. So you have more money in your pocket. So yeah. you can go do something on the healthcare side that's valuable to you yeah. as opposed to paying for things that are valuable to other people. So yeah. for example, my family of four, we are paying $1,400, 12 to $1,400 I get no, no this year it would have been fourteen hundred dollars if I had a healthcare.gov plan. Instead, I'm paying six hundred dollars. So I'm saving eight hundred dollars a month. That's almost ten thousand dollars a year. And now that allows me and my family, if there are things that I can't submit to the crowd, then I can go do whatever I want. Like I've right. got ten thousand dollars more that I can go in and, and and buy things that are valuable to me. And by the way, that that's a much more um, you know, market-based approach where yeah. I'm going to pay for what's valuable to me. And it's a fair exchange of goods as opposed to me going through a health insurance plan to pay for it way yeah. more efficient than if somebody else pays for it. So that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. I mean, just if we just even look at grocery costs, right? It's like if someone can put $200 more a month into better food, exactly. food like that's going to make an enormous difference. In the yeah. Quality yeah. Life. That's, that's way that's, clearly enough to move from processed foods to unprocessed foods, <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, right. And, and so people complain, well, the, the processed stuff is just so cheap. Well, look, I'm giving you $800 a month to go and better yourself and your family to go get the stuff on the outside of the grocery store, as opposed to the inside of the grocery store. So yeah. um, we're, we're our, that's, that's what our community, you know, wants. that's what they're looking for. 
I'll tell you just one qu- funny story. It's a little bit off topic, but it's a good one. And I want to make sure I get it in before I go. But do you have any idea, um, and given kind of wh- who you are and what you do, you might, um, how many babies are born at home? What percentage of babies are born at home in the United States? Any idea? I know it all. I went to um, Seattle Midwifery School back in the day uh, to be a birth doula. And mm-hmm. I know in the state of Wyoming, it was illegal. <laughs> oh, really? Birth. So I'm going to go with less than 1%. 1.6% in the United States babies are born at home. For crowd health, it's 40%. So, you know, it's 25 times or something like that more uh, likely yeah. to have a baby at home. But it's our group, a group of people that that are members of crowd health are anti-Western medicine, yeah. you know, established. Yeah, and, and, and people love crowd health for that because you can have a doula, you can have your midwife, you can, you know, have all of that stuff. It's and safer. by the way- And it's safer. It's, <laughs> and it's and it's less expensive and it's less expensive than going into this big hospital you know and yeah. the probability of you getting all this other stuff that you don't want while you're in there yeah. is you know is eliminated um yeah. and so people are taking control over their own health care and i think that's just a perfect yeah. you know data point that shows that one of my so my daughter was born at home and uh you know, when you're born at home, you don't have, you don't have someone injecting you. You don't have, you don't have this having given power over to someone else to care for your child. Right. And that's an indoctrination. That's a, that's a, it's a very visceral, but also a mindset indoctrination of there's someone between you and your child as the mother. And that's not instinctual. It's not primal at all. So a lot of primal instinctual bonding is broken, which means that the mother's in a completely different physiology as is the baby. So there's going to be a rise of, of secondary and tertiary health issues. We see this all the time in holistic in holistic health. So my daughter, when she was, you know, she was like 10, 11, 12, she's like, all my friends go to the doctor. How come you never take me to the doctor? <laughs> and I was like, well, what, what are we going, like, for what? Like, are you worried about your eyes? Are you worried about your ears? Like, what do you want to have tested? Because we can, like, pull up an eye exam on the screen at home. And, like, if you want to, like, and if you really just want to, like, make sure you're okay, like, sure, we can go to a doctor, but it's like, it's such a different way yeah. of, of, of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Really. I mean, we have a lot of people who go and just get labs, like just like get yeah. labs, understand what's going on with their body. And if something is awry, then a lot of times people can figure it out themselves. Like, why is my X, Y, you know, why is my, I hate to say this cause it's so debatable, but like, why is my LDL cholesterol so low or, or so or sorry, HDL cholesterol is so low. Why is my LDL so high? Is that something to worry about? Again, people have different thoughts on that, but like you can go and figure it out for yourself and you can, you can see both sides of the story. Whereas if I go to my cardiologist, I have a high LDL. So I'm an, I'm an animal based eater. Um, I have high LDL and you know, my cardiologist wants to put me on statins. Um, I'm an autonomous, you know, healthcare consumer. And that's something where I can go and decide, okay, do I want to do that? Do I not want to do that? Let's hear both sides of the story where my cardiologist is being like, no, get on a high dose statin now. And I'm so I'm like, well, let me step back and let's do a little research on this, make sure I understand. And so we've got a lot of like people in our community here, like, I want to understand like what's going on with my body as opposed to just saying yes to doctors who want to stick, you know, stuff into my body that is not, you know, organic and created from you know what we see outside our, our windows you know and so that those are the things that are, are really different about our community it's a fun it's such a fun group to be a part of um mm. I, I i love the the debates and and things like that so we have a lot of vegans a lot of vegetarians and a lot of animal eaters and they love going to going at each other and like what's the best way and i'm kind of like I'll let you all debate that. <laughs> right. I love it. And so our tests are tests um, submitted like the same way as like they pay the first $500 and then they, they can submit to crowd health if, um, if they want to get crowdfunding for the rest. Yeah. Once, once a, uh, we allow you to have one wellness visit per year, that's fully fundable. So you don't have that $500 upfront because we want people to, you know, go and, and do their annual wellness if they want to. And so, you can do that at your OB, you can do it at your pediatrician, you can do that at the primary care doctor, you can do just get labs. So if you don't want to do the doctor and you want to just get labs, you can do that. You can do it as a dental or a vision. So you get to choose one of those every year that you can do and you can submit the entire thing up to 300 bucks to the uh, to the community. And that is fully fundable as opposed to having that $500 kind of initial mm-hmm. commitment. So. 
and a lot of people, you know, in our community just use it for labs, which is significantly less than $300 if you could get a kind of a full set of labs. So it works out great. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I just want to thank you for your time, Andy. And, uh, you know, everyone, this is, I'll, I'll, I'm going to actually have an affiliate link with you guys. Uh, but crowdhealth.com, the blog is so fascinating. The resources, under resources, you'll see members guide, FAQ, referrals, blogs. There's so much, so much great information on your site. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah join crowdhealth.com. And that's our handle on all the social media platforms as well. If people want to follow us there. 